Welcome to Titans of Terror, where we look at the men and women who have shaped the horror landscape. Today's victim, or subject, director Terrence Fisher. Terrence Fisher was born on February 23, 1904, in Maida Vale, London, England. At the age of 16, he left school and joined the Merchant Navy for five years. He first broke into the film industry as a clapper boy at Lime Grove Studios in 1933. By 1934, he began work as an assistant editor. Gainsborough Pictures gave him his first editor credit in 1936 with Tudor Rose. From 1936 to 1947, Fisher edited a variety of films in various genres, including the massive hits The Wicked Lady and Master of Bankdom. In 1948, Highbury Productions hired Fisher to direct A Song for Tomorrow, a low-budget B-picture about a World War II fighter pilot suffering amnesia, and remembers only the voice of an opera singer, with whom he falls in love. He continued directing mostly dramas and romances. Fisher's first feature for Hammer Films was the 1951 film noir The Last Page, also known as Manbait. The film tells the story of a married bookstore owner getting entangled in blackmail and murder with his attractive young clerk. His next two films for Hammer were the two crime dramas Wings of Danger and Stolen Face. Fisher also dabbled in science fiction at Hammer in 1953 with two more films, Four-Sided Triangle and Spaceways. During this time, Fisher was also working frequently in British television directing episodes of The Adventures of Robin Hood and Dial 999. He even reportedly directed two episodes of The Mickey Mouse Club in 1958. In 1957, Hammer handpicked Fisher to direct their first color horror film, The Curse of Frankenstein. Reworked as a gruesome, morally ambiguous chamber piece starring then-British TV star Peter Cushing and a little-known actor named Christopher Lee. The film was an international smash, raising the bar of on-screen violence and gore. The Curse of Frankenstein established Hammer as a leading name in the British film industry. The next year, Fisher returned with Cushing and Lee with Horror of Dracula, a reworked version of the Bram Stoker classic. Lee portrayed the vampire Count with an animalistic sexuality, while Cushing played his arch nemesis, Dr. Van Helsing. Horror of Dracula was even more successful than the previous Frankenstein film. The film trailblazed its way to becoming the archetypal Hammer film and is often considered Fisher's greatest work. Three days after filming Dracula, Fisher and Cushing went to work on a sequel, The Revenge of Frankenstein. This time, Baron Frankenstein escapes execution and assumes an alias. He transplants his deformed underling's brain into a perfect body to perilous results. In 1959, Fisher made the first color adaptation of The Hound of the Baskervilles. Again, starring Cushing and Lee, with Cushing portraying detective Sherlock Holmes, investigating a nobleman's family curse with a horror slant. Next up for Fisher was the 1959 adaptation of The Mummy, starring Hammer's favorite duo of Cushing and Lee. The film was adapted from three of the Universal Mummy sequels rather than the original film. It follows British archaeologists opening the tomb of an Egyptian princess to nefarious consequences. That same year, Fisher helmed The Man Who Could Cheat Death, about a sculptor slash doctor in 1890s Paris maintaining his youth by periodically replacing a parathyroid gland with that of a living person. Cushing turned down the lead role due to exhaustion. Originally, the film was granted an X certificate, so it was re-edited to be allowed to play in the UK. In December of 1959, the Hammer adventure horror film The Stranglers of Bombay was released. The film is about a murderous religious cult, waylaying travelers and stealing goods in 19th century India. As the disappearances mount and trade becomes difficult, the British East India Company is forced to act but they give the job to an upper-class officer completely out of touch with the country, rather than the obvious candidate who has been in India for years and well understands the people and its culture. 
1960, Fisher took on The Two Faces of Dr. Jekyll, with Paul Massey in the lead dual role. In contrast to the other film versions, Hammer's Jekyll was portrayed as a rather bland and faceless person, while Hyde was presented as suave and handsome. This reflects Fisher's belief in what critics called the charm of evil. Hammer wanted to make a sequel to their highly successful Dracula film. Fisher and Cushing returned, but Lee did not, for fear of being typecast. The script was rewritten many times, and eventually we got 1960's The Brides of Dracula. The only Hammer Dracula without Dracula. The film focuses on vampire hunter Dr. Van Helsing returning to Transylvania to destroy a handsome bloodsucker named Baron Meinster, who has designs on a beautiful young school teacher. The sequel was another hit for Hammer. Next up, Fisher changed gear a bit by directing Sword of Sherwood Forest, a Robin Hood adventure with Peter Cushing as the Sheriff of Nottingham, and Richard Green reprising his role from the television show that Fisher once directed. The story concerns the sheriff's plot to confiscate estates of fallen crusaders, but Robin Hood and Maid Marian foil their plan. Fisher soon returned to horror as he helmed the first werewolf film to be shot in color, 1961's The Curse of the Werewolf, starring Oliver Reed. In 18th century Spain, an adopted boy becomes a werewolf and terrorizes the inhabitants of his town. The film has gone on to be a cult classic, with being referenced in both The Howling and An American Werewolf in London. In 1962, Fisher was tasked with bringing The Phantom of the Opera to Hammer. This version stars Herbert Lom and is loosely based on the Gaston LaRue novel. The film was panned for being rather dull. The same year, Fisher flew to Germany to direct Sherlock Holmes and the Deadly Necklace, with Christopher Lee starring as the great detective. The film's plot has Holmes and Watson attempting to recover a stolen necklace formerly worn by Cleopatra, from Professor Moriarty. Fisher and Lee were not happy with the film, placing blame on the German producers. Fisher then returned in 1964 to helm Fox's horror comedy, The Horror of It All, starring Pat Boone. When an American salesman and his English fiancé visit her eccentric family who live in a remote old mansion in the country, he discovers that someone is trying to kill everyone there to get the family fortune. The film is basically a loose remake of The Old Dark House. That same year, Fisher returned to Hammer with Cushing and Lee to make The Gorgon, a film about a female monster taking human form and terrorizing a small European village by turning its citizens into stone. As if that wasn't enough for 1964, Fisher also made the sci-fi horror film The Earth Dies Screaming, about a group of survivors fighting off a deadly alien invasion that uses robots and a poisonous gas to take over the earth. The robots kill by touch and then reanimate their victims as eyeless zombies. In 1966, Fisher returned with Christopher Lee for the third Hammer Dracula film, Dracula, Prince of Darkness. This time, Dracula is resurrected 10 years after the first film and preys on four unsuspecting English tourists who have taken shelter in his castle. Dracula does not speak in the film, save for a few hisses. Christopher Lee claims he disliked the dialogue and refused to say them, while writer Jimmy Sangster claims he did not write any dialogue for Dracula to say. Away from Hammer, Fisher helmed the 1966 horror film Island of Terror, starring Peter Cushing. The film tells the tale of an isolated remote island community being threatened by tentacled silicates which liquefy and digest bone and tissue. TV Guide wrote of the film, a rather shaky plot is boosted by Cushing's ever-effective performance and Fisher's tight direction. In 1967, Fisher returned to the world of Frankenstein with the fourth entry into Hammer's monster films, Frankenstein Created Woman. This one follows a reanimated Baron Frankenstein transferring the soul of an executed young man into the body of his lover, prompting her to kill the men who wronged them. Radio Times stated, Terence Fisher's neat balance of psychological horror and murky sexuality make this a fine addition to the genre. Low-budget science fiction came calling once more with 1967's Night of the Big Heat, also known as Island of the Burning Doomed, starring Christopher Lee and Peter Cushing. Something strange is occurring on Faroe Island in the British Isles. 
Whilst temperatures on the mainland are cold, the temperatures on this island is mysteriously increasing to an unbearably hot level, possibly due to aliens. Next up, Fisher directed a film many consider one of his best, The Devil Rides Out, a.k.a. The Devil's Bride, starring Christopher Lee. The film tells the story of a duke and his old pal battling a satanic cult. The film's tone is more serious than many of the other Hammer films. Christopher Lee had often stated that of all his vast back catalog of films, this was his favorite, and the one he would have liked to have seen remade with modern special effects, and with his playing a mature Duke de Richelieu. Fisher returned in 1969 with Hammer's Frankenstein Must Be Destroyed, the fifth entry into the franchise. Baron Frankenstein travels to a new town to meet Dr. Brandt, with whom he has been corresponding with and had hopes to collaborate. He arrives, however, to learn that Brandt is in a mental institution, having lost his mind completely. He, however, is desperate to learn a secret that Brandt was going to share with him, and kidnaps him with the intent of extracting that secret by transplanting his brain into another body. Terence Fisher then sustained injuries in a pair of road accidents, which resulted in lengthy periods of convalescence. Fisher would return one more time to the director's chair in 1972, with Frankenstein and the Monster from Hell, the seventh and final installment of the franchise. Baron Victor Frankenstein, having survived the fire at the end of the previous film, lives and works in an insane asylum as a surgeon and is given a number of privileges, as he holds incriminating evidence on the asylum's corrupt director. Frankenstein, using the alias of Dr. Carl Victor, uses his position to continue his experiments in the creation of man. The film unfortunately performed poorly at the box office. After several years in retirement, Terence Fisher died on June 18, 1980, at the age of 76, leaving a lasting legacy. The Bat salutes Terence Fisher, a true titan of terror.